that was very exciting. <laughs> um, yeah, the, I mean, the score and the cutting, it, it was almost like a car chase. <laughs> I mean, it, so, it, I mean, and the way the music modulated into something tender or just interesting and then suddenly picked up again. Were you deeply, in, I mean, how much of the musical addition yeah. were you involved with? Um, I mean, that was a huge part of it. And we did work with our composer, Chris Bowers, from a very early stage. And I had tempted that prior to having his music in a very similar way. Um, I chose this scene because this one is kind of interesting in terms of what else an editor can do, which is what happened before we shot. Because in the script, uh, she hits that big serve, and that's the serve that tells you she's won. Yet, in the script, there were pages of the match playing out. And so when I met with Reynaldo, the director, and our cinematographer, Bob Ellswit, prior to shooting, we were talking about how we were going to do the tennis and all this, and I just said, you guys, the scene is over at the serve. It's done. Like, and, and Bob kind of stood up and went, we don't have to film the rest. And I'm like, that's right. <laughs> so saved a lot of time and energy by getting that out of the script early. And then also, um, when I put that to, that, you know, to get it to what you're talking about is sort of the music working with the pacing in a very, you know, specific way. And that just took some time finding the scene and how um, that sort of melding of the minds moment with the family, it, how I was going to kind of change up the feel and the pacing of the scene to feel that excitement it ramp up in the right way to to feel her coming back. And we did have to go and do some pickup shoots, uh, shots for this scene because I didn't have all the pieces I needed. So we went back and got another shot of um, Venus when she's kind of walked away from the court when the family's all looking at her. Also went back and got an extra shot of, um, of Richard for that because I felt like they had, we had, I had to really slow down the action in that moment um, to feel the energy of the entire family kind of willing her. And I, I love that shot so much when she turns around to take that serve because you see this look, this fierce look on her face and you know like, oh, here's the Venus we know. Um, so yeah, and then Chris, uh, yeah, we had to calibrate that just right, and I love his sort of, there's triumph and emotion and worry, there's a lot going on in that music. Um, and it just took a while to, to get it right. Um, and also I didn't, you know, that tennis match that was the first professional match had to feel very different from the last one. You know, you don't want all the tennis scenes to feel like the same thing over and over, so they each sort of have their own unique arc and style for w the story they're telling, so that was, that yeah, because that's a remarkable thing to make tennis matches seem different for me. <laughs> yeah, not yeah, a, not yeah. a fan, but yeah. uh, no. But a scene like that, cutting a scene like that, is exceedingly difficult. Just getting the continuity right, uh, and 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 the, the whole sense of timing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, have... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No. Go... Well, were, were you working? Were you actually uh, working with the cinematographer as well? Well, we did previs shoots for the tennis in the movie to figure out the camera language. Um, I had cut another tennis movie years before called Battle of the Sexes, which is about a worldwide televised match, and it was shot like classic television coverage that was not going to work for this. These were not televised events. There's no commentator, which was another thing that was different from the other sports movies I'd done. So Alan, like when you say it's like watching a car chase or something, that's because we had to, I had to cut it like ac an action sequence. It didn't have voices telling us how we're feeling or what we're supposed to feel. You had to feel it with what's happening and the reactions of the family. Um, so, and jumping time is a huge part of that in any sport because sports matches are long and so you have to have different 
tricks to, to jump time, whether you're jump cutting or montaging or whatever, and um, use that judiciously to, to keep it interesting. You mentioned something at the very beginning. Um, I've, in my career, I've had very little uh, input when I've suggested, well, we don't need that because the scene is over. And, mm -hmm. uh, I've had, most people don't listen. <laughs> so how have you found that? I mean, have you done this well, before? Uh, sure. I, mean, I find that most directors ask me in the days leading up to, in the weeks leading up to the shoot, they're always being pressured to drop things because of budget. So I'm always asked to kind of, you know, or a producer calls that they're asking us to take five minutes out. Can you, do you see that ahead of time? So I often make suggestions um, ahead of time for that. This one was so obvious to me. Um, and then in terms of the pre -vis shoot, you know, they played with angles that were quite different from you know, how you normally see tennis on television, you know, they have these low dolly shots and also we're crossing the line. You never see that when you watch tennis because it's very disorienting. But I felt like it was, uh, you know, we found that some shots worked really well and some didn't before we shot, which was great. And that in terms of it being power tennis and seeing the ball really whiz by camera when you're low and behind the player was very effective. Um, yeah, and, uh, and also in the crossing of the line, like they're, that's sort of anchored by Richard, you know, might be in the background of a shot. You kind of have a sense of where you are, even if you don't, you're not really conscious of it. So it didn't seem disorienting, which surprised me and was kind of fun to discover. I, I particularly love the shot you had of the linesman holding onto the net. Yeah, the now they have electronic things, you yeah. know, it hits and then it just, but then, you know. They yeah, I, didn't, I never saw anything like that. Yeah. I just love that moment uh, of calm, as yeah, it were. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Uh, um, every time I open my mouth, I'm going to say, oh, uh, you made me cry, but um, <laughs> that's it. Um, but I think I mentioned to you when I watched it uh, that how emotional I thought it was. And that moment when he's trying to calm her down, like, I had the same reaction today that I did when I first watched it. It's like, I just got so emotional and... I just love you manipulating me in that way, and I, I was just wondering if you was that um, was that something they were like. I really this is a moment where I need to kind of um, tease it a little bit, or I was just curious. Like I just I didn't think about it in terms of um, how an audience would react. I guess except for what's really baked into the movie and w what we really worked really hard on is the family connection and how much how especially Richard and Venus, how strongly connected they are, that in this moment they don't have to say much, they just have to think it and will it. And so I, I feel like because of the way the characters are set up in the film, that by the time you get here you really feel that and you know what that means for her. And so it, it's a, you know, it's a, character feeling sort of part of the equation. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. the, the, the use of the family was really uh, remarkable because you felt everything. You felt the disappointment, you felt the joy, yeah. you, you felt the anticipation. Yeah. It was terrific use, really Thank nice. You. Thank you. Yeah. Anything else? Okay.